First Lady Aisha Buhari has called for urgent action to address sexual harassment against students. Buhari made the call during the exclusive screening of the BBC Africa Eye Sex for Grades documentary on Monday night in Lagos. The First Lady lamented that the issue of sexual harassment against women was not unique to universities but has become prevalent in the society, including religious settings. Buhari, represented by Aisha Rimi, a lawyer, condemned sexual harassment against students, saying it is unacceptable as the nation's educational system had suffered many setbacks that had hindered its development. Earlier, PLOS TV Africa spoke with a legal practitioner, Ifi Oji, on the issue. To be honest, I have no response. My mom always told me, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. But in terms of looking at it from an analytical point of view, it's opening up the floodgates. Him, them, him um, deciding that they want to sue, or him encouraging a lawsuit is actually going to open up the floodgates for all, all um, victims and all, um, all victims against the perpetrators. So please, if he wants to create a World War Four in terms of mm. women and men in, in, in those kind of situations, by all means, they should go ahead. But I don't think this is a new uh, dawn in Nigeria's um, history. Mm -hmm. Women are not going to be silent. And that silent culture has been broken forever with this documentary. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's talking about myself. I'm a lawyer. Nothing in Nigerian law precludes the, um, the steps that were taken by um, by the BBC, by BBC Africa. I, um, I, I I'm sure you know, as I know as well, that if most media houses mm -hmm. have their own uh, policy Policies. in terms of how they go about investigative journalism. Exactly. So uh, having having um, th when some of the um, some of the, um, the makers of the documentary sat down and had further interviews after this um, after this documentary came out, and it took them nine months yes. to set everything up and it wasn't they had dozens and dozens of different interviews they went through every process that has required with a fine tooth comb there is nothing that they have done that that would show that they had acted recklessly or tried to sort of um, go against what the law says mm -hmm. in terms of finding out what um, what their findings were this is actually a very worrying uh, and, and it's actually indicative if, if I if, if, if I may say of of what as so how insidious it is in our society. Mm. I mean, we can talk about sex for grades, but what about sex for work, sex for jobs, sex for contracts, sex for opportunities, sex for mentorship? Okay, so this is a, it's a pervasive part of our society that we have been silent on for too long. And I think we need to actually start opening up those conversations mm -hmm. and being realistic and being truthful and even, and even in a more encouraging environment and safe spaces for our young ladies to have a voice. I, I think uh, I heard that uh, in August this year, University of Lagos, and maybe as some people may argue it's too little too late, mm -hmm. but University of Lagos actually put forward a policy and uh, made them some of their, I, I guess I, I hear that not all their, um, their um, um, staff were able to sign it because it's just been um, put in place. Mm -hmm. But um, they put on in place a sexual harassment policy to try and protect the ladies. Mm -hmm. But I actually took a little, uh, I looked at it yesterday. There are certain uh, aspects that still need tweaking. For example, some of the girls in, in certain situations will be rusticated mm -hmm. and for, for, act, for acts that are not actually their own fault. So it's something that you have to really go back to the drawing and look at again. But you're right, sexual harassment policies are a first step. Find, re, 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 revoke of licenses for all of these mm -hmm. institutions where these sort of acts uh, uh, are found. Uh, you, there's so many things and so, many, so much recourse that we can actually look into and try and put into our law to make sure that um, this is obviously uh, something that does not occur. We always have, we, Nigeria has a, has a tendency, we have a culture of throwing money and throwing uh, uh, laws on the problem. Mm -hmm. It's beyond that. I mean, when you look at the, the burden of proof it will take to prove these sort of um, criminal acts, it's almost impossible. And you look at the persecution rates, which we don't always have the correct figures for, are abysmally low. Mm. So in as much as I, I, I applaud his, um, I applaud the bill, I am very worried about the actual execution of, or, or the enforcement of, of, the, of when it becomes law, when it's passed to law. And I just wonder if we're not um, throwing laws as a problem that is has, to, has to be looked at at a closer and a microscopic way in our society. Wife of the governor of Ekiti State, Bisi Fayemi, on Monday said she faced sexual harassment while she was a university student. 
Fire Minister said this in request to the viral, in respect to the viral video of the University of Lagos Unilag lecturer caught on camera demanding sex from a female student seeking admission. The first lady, who did not find the act pleasing, said she cried because what these young women have experienced is the story of many who pass through higher institutions in this country. She emphasized that it's time to speak up, speak out, and not silence the victims because the culture of silence has endured enough. The First Lady said her kitty had already opened a register to name and shame sex offenders in the state. She also called on other states to do likewise. Femi Adegoke, a social commentator, also shared his view on the sex for grade allegation. Uh, it's absolutely, absolutely right. It just shows how our moral fabrics has broken down. There's moral decadence from, even from now, from secondary schools. We're talking about universities now. We have two girl children being molested from secondary schools, from workplace, from university. It's always been, the university one has always been there, but it's been eating even when people like us were in school. It's been eating, but now is because uh, there has not been any punishable uh, penalty for people who have done it in the past. And so everybody thinks they can get away with it. But it just, it saddens my heart when I watched that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Because about a year or two ago, a lecturer in University of Ife yeah. was called up for what he's done many years back. Sure. And he got suspended, I'm sure he's in jail Sentenced now. Sentenced for six but, years, I think. But the society itself does not even know what, what right, as in the children, the students, they don't even know the right they have. In that video, manipulation was used. But in other places as well, like I said, there are other different tactics that have been used just to lure the female party. But, like I have always said, out of ten, you'll find that some, like three or four ladies, make themselves vulnerable. Let me use the case of, uh, of the university environment now. You know that this lecturer says you must meet certain number of attendants and you make yourself unavailable. You don't come to classes and then the attendants carry certain mark for your grade. So now you go to the man to beg. And a man who already has evil mind to perpetrate his evil, we now use that opportunity or that the platform you are presenting to him to say, okay, you want me to waive your uh, attendance, you give this. You make yourself vulnerable. But what I'm saying in essence is the, children, the student needs to do their own part. So for you to fight a, a, a good battle, you must be prepared and you must do your own side. And then it, I take it back home. Even parents now leave room for this because we cannot just treat the problem without looking at the roots. You find out that these days, parents, they write wahek for their children. They pay to write jump for them. Really? Yeah, yeah we, it's, all, it's in the news. They support, they pay to write wahek, they pay to write uh, jump, and then when they get into school, they buy their way to pay for the, uh, what do you call it, post jump. And some of them don't even get admission. They know their parents take them and they pay their way through. Mm. So the, the children, uh, the student get into school now, he already understands that I can pay my way through school. So all these, but that, I haven't said that. It doesn't make, it doesn't make what the lecturers or the men take the female a party for. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it right. So what am I saying? It's the government, the society, we need to put a punishable or uh, a penalty in place mm. and let the, everybody knows they are right. Yes. The truth is that, yeah, it's good he's been suspended, but he shouldn't stop at that. It's not enough to suspend him. They, they need, he needs to bring out his other corporates because he's saying there's a cold room. That means there's a ring. We all, we all went to invest in Nigeria, so we know what plays out with these lecturers. Even the ones in other departments, they exchange because they don't want people to know. So they do that. So there's a ring. So he, because he's being caught now, he needs, to be, uh, he needs to be investigated and he needs to bring out others. Mm -hmm. And they have to be used as scapegoats. I know old habits don't that die, part. yes, because I don't think such a man should be caught because of what happened in Ife 
a few years back. Sure. That should have sent yes. some message to them. But obviously, they have not stopped. So we need to bring up more, it's not only University of Lagos, other universities. And then the university system, in conjunction with Nigerian police, need to put a system in place that we go in tandem with what the former Senate president has said, mm. that they have passed the bill. The bill needs to be assented to mm -hmm. by the executive and all that. They need to have a system in place where we have sex offenders. We have their list. And then the public can assess it. And if I find that this such a person is still in the university system, I can begin to prosecute. And then we can begin to say, no, I don't want my child there. Why? Because everywhere in the world that I have been, they have such lists. And I hope Nigeria needs to, just like EFCC does. Mm. EFCC is, a, is monitoring on financial crimes. crimes. So we need another body now, or a system mm. that will be under the Nigerian police. Because I listened yesterday to one of the DPOs who actually said that, look, the uh, prosecution process is too long, that they had 200 and something cases of rape, mm. and they only got judgment for 10. And they found so many things after that. Some families will not even let the case go through. They will be for stigmatization, mm. and then you find out that the culprit is going to the victim's family. They are beginning to discuss without the police. Mm. So they cut through the whole process. So we need a proper process where people know their rights. And then our culture needs to evolve. We okay. cannot stay stigmatization and somebody is getting molested every day. Hmm. And let me quickly add, it's not only female children now. Yeah, the female are on the hop high. Hmm. We find that young boys are molested as well. Even like you said, in workplace, female bosses molest their men of male uh, lower staffs. So we just need a process that we caught people, that they know when they are caught, they will get punished. Mm. But now people know when they are caught, it just gets swept under the carpet, and it's just noise. This should not be noise. 